funny thing happened to me on the way to heaven. <laughs> I threw out some seed and it grew. <laughs> Man. Talk about growing. Boy. I don't know about you, but I know that when I started this mess, <laughs> I was kind of thinking along the lines of like small plants that were kind of small and you know had big fruit. Now I got big plants and the fruit's like getting ready to come and it's going to be like all over the place. <laughs> uh, in case you can't tell, these are tomato plants. I call this my tomato forest. <laughs> Boy. And then my wife can't figure out that, you know, if you, if you water it, it'll grow. <laughs> So it's been kind of fun to see these 99 cent plants sometimes that we take and purchase and bring them home and put them in a container and water them and watch them and see them grow and bear fruit. I like that. You know, God teaches us a lot by looking at plants that we grow ourselves, you know, that we put in the seed, you know, we water it, we watch it grow, and we watch it bloom and blossom, and then we see it bear fruit. And I kind of enjoy that, you know. I know that uh, some people, you know, they don't, they like to take other people's fruit, you know, and sometimes that's what you see a lot in ministry, or you see a lot in life, you know, people snatching this or snatching that or grabbing this or grabbing that, but, you know, there's something really rewarding about being able to watch something you planted grow and develop and become its own fruit, its own plant, its own being, its own existence. You know, I I ran into a friend of mine just the other day and he was telling me about this place I used to live because this that you see around me is why I was asked, you know, consistently and why we finally prayed to leave because every time that I started to grow things in the spring, they would grow tall and they didn't want them on my patio. You know, they wanted me to have every patio look exactly the same as every other patio. Now, it wasn't in our contract per se, and it wasn't like, you know, one of those things that was mandatory according to when we moved in, but they kept telling us verbally that, oh, you have to do this because the owners say. You know, oh, you have to do this because so and so says. Oh, you have to do this because we're telling you now to do it. So we basically submitted ourselves. We were obedient to the unrighteous ways with which this landlord was treating us. And we didn't fight it, you know, we resisted it, you know, in my mind. My mouth was, you know, going a mile a minute to God, but, you know, I wouldn't say anything to the person because he was a pastor and he was kind of, you know, using the job, you know, to pay for his ministry, I think, you know. And, his ministry was never really that big. It's just kind of like a little storefront thing. And so I was always praying for him, and I was hoping that that time that I stayed there, that you know God would change his attitude or his ways, or you know somehow develop him into more of a caring person or somebody that was more consistent, you know. And, and sure enough, I just kept away from him, you know, because I knew that there would be, you know, if he's in the flesh and if I'm walking in the spirit, there might be conflict. So one day I was going towards my, you know, dumpster, throwing away trash, and he told me that I had to take something down, and so I finally just said, okay, you know, and I kind of went, but what about these other ones? And then he blew up and yelled at me about, don't worry about other people, and I went, okay. So I went back into my apartment and prayed, and I went back and talked to him for a few minutes, you know, calmed him down, you know, and got things resolved, and about, oh, I don't know, I told my wife as soon as she came home, it's time to move because if he's blowing up over things that aren't important, you know, something important will come along and unfortunately he won't be prepared for it. So once this conflict, you know, had reached that point of no, no compromise where I said, you know, we really should look at someplace else for his peace and for mine because in reality I pray for his ministry that it keeps going and that the Lord bless him and cause him to learn and to grow and to develop into the man of God that he's supposed to be. And that if he's meant to be in management in apartment complexes that God will teach him, you know, the right way to do things. Because I've run property, I ran thirty three properties in Alaska and 
you know, worked for a millionaire and, you know, helped manage, you know, his properties for him and did all kinds of things, you know. So I, I knew the right way to do things, but I also know personality types that some people are very, shall we say, provocable. <laughs> and the older you get, you hope, the less you become antagonistic and, you know, uppity and all upset about everything that comes along. And I'd already seen, you know, this person yelling and screaming, so I prayed for him, you know, and I, then I said to the Lord, you know, well, Father, you know, it's time we moved, you know, because I think it's time we got out of here. And so God opened up the doors to this place where we can obviously be blessed because we spread out, you know, into our new, we call it our Bethel because we like to say, like Jacob, you know, we didn't know that the Lord was here, you know, it was like kind of a neat looking place on the outside and it was kind of like cool looking on the floor plan and kind of was near a creek and kind of like in the center of town and kind of like in a green belt and kind of not. And it was kind of like, okay, and then a big patio and boy, we walked in the place and looked at it and it had cathedral ceilings and it was like different and unique, but it was also cool and kind of fun looking, you know, kind of like the type of place that I would fit in. And so I kind of went, yeah, honey, let's get it. And we went through, you know, all the paperwork and stuff. And they were very professional about it. And they filled out tons of paperwork and gave us all this stuff about how they do things, what they do, and how, you know, to work things as opposed to where we were, you know, which was always, you know, kind of verbal, not really written. And so I kind of was blessed. I said, see, honey, that's what professionals do, you know. And I was telling her about how the Lord had led us in each step of the way. We wanted to pray, and we did, and we walked each step of the way praying as we went and we were brought here and then as we stayed here you know I prayed about everything that we've done and every step that we've gone through you know the Lord with us and the ministry's grown and now the plants have grown and you know everything is just like blossom you know in our lives you know it's like wow my wife's job became a little easier you know so she's into you know one of those jobs where corporations you know tend to downsize your labor pool so you wind up with more labor on some employees especially those that are faithful to work and so she's got you know extra work but she's you know handled it okay but the thing that I wanted to bring out was you really do reap what you sow I mean I could have stayed where I was at and I could have argued and fought and done the whole routine of you know going to renters you know rights and advocacy groups and done all kinds of things and you know that would have been one way of doing it you know and maybe I would have won my case you know and been able to assert myself as being oh I did right but then I never would have had friendships again with that person or I would not have allowed God to work in that person because I would have challenged them and their authority and rather I just left them to the Lord and blessed them and left you know, and even then, after we left, they tried to, you know, <laughs> send us a bill. I was like, okay, well, we can't get it. Walked away. And so, when I saw my ex maintenance man, he came up to me, you know, and he was talking to me, and, you know, he was like gossiping and sharing all this kind of like negative stuff. And I kept thinking, you know, I like not being involved in that kind of world, you know, where I don't gossip and I don't backbite and I don't have to worry about this, that, and the other thing. Where, Whenever I see someone, I have to tell them the latest juicy nugget of, you know, wealth. You know, I kind of like being able to walk out on my porch, you know, where I'm at today, to sit down and to hear the turtle doves, you know, the voice of the Lord speaking to me early in the morning, to be able to sit down and to share that in the ministry with those that are watching the videos, to be able to water my plants, although I think I overwater them because they curl. We thought maybe they curled because of some other reason, but since they're uncurling, maybe I overwatered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so they're okay, you know. But uh, watching them grow and develop and become huge, you know, and then you know, getting the containers ready for you know our plants for in the summer because it's still too early for summer, really. I mean, it's not even really spring, I guess, or it sort of is, but it's kind of in between. We're, gonna get some 70 weather maybe 180 but um, haven't gotten it yet <laughs> so it's kind of been like wow you know I just am amazed that I have seen the blessing come upon my life you know in being faithful to let God lead the way he chooses to and I guess that's what I wanted to share with you this morning is 
you may be caught into some ridiculous political issue, you know, that you think you've got to do something. Take a step back and think about it for a while. You reap what you sow. If you go into this constant, you know, protesting and contesting and always arguing and debating about every single issue that comes along, what do you become? Don't you become argumentative and debater and, you know, a protester and, you know, argumentative? I mean, isn't that what you become? You become what you've done? Wouldn't you rather do something else like plant a seed, water it, watch it grow, see it bear fruit? I think that's the way that we're supposed to go. I don't think God wants us involved in the world in its ways, which is always fighting for righteousness or fighting for this cause or that cause. I think God gave us a reason, a purpose, and a design. I think that purpose was to bear fruit, that we were going to grow no matter what we do. We're going to either grow into debaters, arguers, provokers, um, argumentative, you know, divisive, or we're going to grow and bear fruit, you know, kind of like the peace, love, and joy of the Spirit. You know, we're going to do spiritual things, you know, things that will accomplish growth in others and will cause them to develop into their own way if we just allow God to have it His way. So, I don't know about you, but you know, I kind of, I kind of think that's, that's the way we should go. I think that's what life should be about. It should be one of growth, you know, and development. You know, kind of like what family units should be. Families weren't supposed to be, you know, like, well, let's try out this wife and see if she works out. Or let's try out this husband and see if he provides. Or let's try out these children and see if they're good enough that we keep them. I think it was about let's grow them up. And if they turn out the way that we planted, then we planted correctly. If they turned out the way they did, it's partly because we reap what we sowed. We did it. It wasn't their fault. So. When you make your choices in life, when you decide on a husband, or a wife, or children, or your job, or your circumstances, it's your choice. You will reap what you sow. Now that can be a good harvest like you see here. It can be tomato plants growing big and full and just lavishing in the sunlight and loving every minute of it and just taking in the water and sucking it up in their roots and breathing out just that wonderful fresh grown tomato smell. <laughs> or you could be flowering you know, in your own little pot. But if you're really not into that, and you really want to be in the world, then you're going to get into all the politics, and all the gossip, and all the debates, and all the social things, you know, that maybe God doesn't really want you to do. Maybe even though it's the end of the world, which it is, and maybe though it is the last generation, which we know we are, we still bear fruit. We still live our lives. We still are spiritual beings that are inhabiting a physical body that is passing away with the world and everything in the world that's passing away. But our spirit is going to live forever. So shouldn't we reaping what we sow by sowing to the spirit and not the flesh? In other words, do we really need to build our man caves, or can we rather build our spiritual house, you know, the one that we're going to live in forever, and start to make it less of a hovel and more of a holy structure unto God that's something He can use and bless us in our lives for eternity with? Wouldn't you rather be writing a spiritual Harley than a physical one? I mean, wouldn't you rather be like, you know, having your so to speak, you know, your Glock and your gun and all these stupid things, you know, that are toys, you know, um, wouldn't you rather have some spiritual weaponry, you know, like the Word of God, memorized and able to share and to be able to care in the right way and means at the opportunity to touch a person's life and cause them to grow and to be filled with the Spirit and to see kingdoms fall because of just a word? I mean, you can take your gun and shoot something, but frankly, what's it doing? doesn't accomplish anything against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even protect you. The sad part is it just deceives you into a false sense of protection. Because when you put your strength in your arm and not the Lord, you find that your arms, weaponry, strength of might, yourself, your guns, your roses, whatever it may be, will fail. 
But when you put your strength and trust in the Lord, He protects you, provides for you, and promises that whatever you go through, He will be with you. So, really, in this kind of reaping and sowing thing, wouldn't you rather be with God than with the world? Wouldn't you rather, like, kind of sow to the Spirit than sow to the flesh? Wouldn't you rather reap of the Spirit of God blessings, peace, love, and joy than get caught in the world and stuck in a rut? You know, kind of like staying in that kind of negative way, kind of torn down, beat up, broken up, kind of stupid thing that you've gotten yourself into. Because don't get me wrong, you're going to reap what you sow, and if you decide to you know, get involved in it, you'll be there for a while, getting yourself all muddy and bloody and grimy and gooey and gooey, until finally you know, you go, I've had enough. I'm going back to the place where my father's house is, you know, and I'm going to go get cleaned up because it was better to be one of his servants than it is to be a son of God, you know, here when I am in the world, you know, being all beaten up by everything around me. So, you know, when you see people like that, you know, that maybe they're supposed to be sons of God, you know, and maybe they've gotten into the world, you know, and maybe they're reaping what they're sowing, don't beat them down you know, and beat them up. But just pray for them and walk away. You know, just bless them, you know, say, God bless you. And, you know, kind of give them what they might need at the time. And even if they want your coat, give them everything you can. And then walk away. Because trust me, looking at these tomato plants, what I have now is so much better than what I just had before. And I can't help but say, praise the Lord. And I am so thankful that God delivered me out of being involved with those that are carnal and in the world so that I can stay with those that are spiritual and reaping of the Lord eternal life. Wouldn't you rather do that too? Be with those of like mind, those that have a heart for Jesus, those that love purely, that walk simply, that talk gently, and that just love God? I think so. Because after all, Look at what you get to read.